This question is for David and then Allison. So we'll hear both sides. Apparently, peace is not possible. What now? You know, I hate to tell someone that he's just plain dead wrong, but whoever asked that question, he's just plain dead wrong. Um, the, the beginning of my presentation was very clear. Peace is possible. There is any question about that. What we're seeing with the new leadership that is just beginning to emerge, the tip of the iceberg, the people who share my evaluation of Arafat as a career terrorist. By the way, you can read about him in the handout that I gave you. There's a whole article about how he was uh, a puppet of the KGB. Um, just read it, guys. Before you laugh, read it. Um, you know, they, they, they share that opinion. And they are working against him now. And they're working against the other terrorists because they want exactly what I just described. And as soon as they are in a position to exercise their will without being killed by Arafat's minions, without being tortured and beaten up by his thugs, and without being terrorized by Hamas and Islamic Jihad and the PFLP and the DFLP and the PFLPGC and about a six other terrorist groups that are working there, then we will see the real possibility for peace. So I would say that um, we have a definite future with peace. Well, it, it's nice to find that we do have one point of agreement. <laughs> I feel convinced that there will be peace. There is no doubt that there will be peace. As I have the good fortune to go around the country speaking to groups around the country, I'm finding that the American public is finally waking up to this issue as I finally did myself three years ago and are becoming extremely outraged at what they're learning is being done with their tax money. I spoke to a Kiwanis club today at, at noon down in San Jose. They were outraged when the American public, as I said earlier, when the American public decides no more, not with our tax money, then the enormous power disparity will allow Israelis and, and Palestinians to sit down together and truly and honestly come to a compromise. There are very promising signs that that is exactly what will happen once our gargantuan presence is removed. Uh, a number of Israeli organizations and individuals have been calling for peace for many years quite courageously. They have been going to the Palestinian territories and sitting in front of tanks and uh, trying to help medical supplies get through the closures. These Israelis are examples of the kind of peace that will come. The Palestinian people have for many, many years used nonviolent protest. We don't read about this in, in, in this country, mm -hmm. but it's done. We did read about it when Rachel Corey who joined them in that nonviolent Gandhian protest and when she was crushed to death by an Israeli bulldozer. But that nonviolent uh, protest has gone on for many years. Let me read some, some statements from some of the Israelis who are trying to find peace despite the fact that their leadership clearly is uninterested. Uh, here's a statement by, that was in the Times of London an open letter to Ariel Sharon by teenagers who said that they, although they, ref they face jail, if they refuse to join the army when they come of age, they are going to do that rather than to join this occupying force. In an open letter they said, quote, land expropriation, arrests, executions without trial, house demolition, closure, torture and the prevention of health care are only some of the crimes the state of Israel carries out, they said. We do not intend to take part in the execution of this policy. Here's a more recent statement. This by the other extreme. This is by Air Force officers as high one of them is a brigadier general. These are colonels and generals who have been dropping those bombs. They are now saying, we Air Force pilots who are raised on the values of Zionism are refusing. We who were raised to love the state of Israel and contribute to the Zionist enterprise refuse to take part in Air Force attacks on civilian population centers. We refuse to continue to harm innocent civilians. These actions are illegal and immoral 
and are a direct result of the ongoing occupation which is corrupting all of Israeli society. Perpetuation of the occupation is fatally harming the security of the State of Israel and its moral strength. They are now refusing to take part in that. This is where the peace will come from. The peace will come from the peacemakers on both sides when we stop allowing our tax money to go to one side to cr create and commit war crimes.